it is not only about repeating the question back to point C but I know how I can go from point A to point B. We have all faced situations like our mind getting completely stuck in a tech interview. We are given an ESA problem but we are not able to think of any solution. That's how communication plays an important role in the tech interview. So hello everyone, my name is Tanya and I'm back with another video. I make content around tech and if you are new to my channel, please take a moment to subscribe. It provides me a lot of motivation. So today we will be talking about how you can communicate effectively in tech interviews. Yes, tech interviews can be intimidating, but it's always about showing our thought process rather than reaching the actual solution. There are many situations that can occur in a tech interview due to consciousness, due to nervousness and many other factors. So today we will be discussing about how you can handle these situations effectively. So you are presented with a BSA problem and you have to solve it in 30 minutes to 1 hour. Now there are multiple scenarios that can take place during this interview. First thing, you start thinking about the solution silently. Now silence is golden but not in interviews. You have to make sure that you are communicating well with the interviewer. So the first thing that must be coming to your mind is what do I really say? So the thing that you have to say is, okay, now that I have the question, let me rephrase it according to my understanding. It is not only about repeating the question back, it's also about clarifying each and every aspect of the question. Sometimes a problem consists of multiple sub problems and you can understand each of them differently based on what type of questions you have practiced. You can just start by saying, let me rephrase that question to you. And then you can rephrase that question according to your understanding. And if there is any discrepancy, then the interviewer will tell you. Now what you should do is ask clarifying questions. Whenever you are going to code a DSA problem, you will always think about the edge cases. So don't think about the edge cases in your mind. Just ask them to the interviewer that should I also consider negative integers in this question? Or what are the constraints that I should keep in my mind? Questions like these give an impression to the interviewer that you actually think about the scale of the products that you are going to build. Third thing is, now that you have the approach and problem statement in your mind, you should always share your thought process. How you can share your thought process? You can just tell the interviewer that, okay, I have a very unoptimized solution in my mind and it goes like, and you can say the brute force solution that you have in your mind, like, okay, this is an N square solution. Now I'm going to think about how to optimize it. If you don't do this step and rather be silent, the interviewer will not know magically that you know the brute force solution. It's really awesome if you know the solution to the question or you are actively communicating. What are you going to do if you are hitting a roadblock? If you don't know how to proceed with the question, you can always tell the interviewer that I find this question very challenging. I find this part tricky. Can you help me? Or what you can do is break down the problem. You can say that I know that I need to reach from point A to point C, but I know how I can go from point A to point B. Can you suggest me what is wrong with my approach or how should I improve my approach more to reach from point B to point C? So here what you are doing is you are communicating with the interviewer that okay, I might not know the approach to the whole problem, but at least I know something. And if I am guided, well, I'll be able to solve the complete problem. Sharing what you know is really important. If you don't tell, then the interviewer will not know. So it is really important that you share whatever steps you are very sure of in your mind. Owning up in an interview is the best thing that you can do. You can just say, I must admit, I am not sure about the optimal approach. However, if I could use some help, I would definitely be able to reach to a better solution. So this is what you can say and honesty is always appreciated. After you have written the whole code, you should summarize it. Why? This helps in finding any errors that you have missed during writing the code. And one last thing for the end. Remember, it's not always about writing the perfect code, writing it in the most efficient way. More or less, it is always about how well you can explain it to others, how well you can communicate. Because whenever you are working, you will always need to communicate your ideas with the team, your solutions with the team, and you will always have to do a knowledge sharing with all the team members. So this was all about today's video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please take a moment to subscribe the channel and like the video below. 
and i'll see you in the next one bye bye